Hi, so welcome back to my YouTube channel and I'm so excited to be here. I hope that you got a chance to listen video one where I talk a little bit about being an ambitious Jesus girl, a little bit about, you know, the purpose of this um, YouTube channel um, and just, again, just be inspired by what I would have shared with you. So today I want to share a question that I'm always asked and even today, I had an event um, in Mandeville. You know, I went to Mandeville to minister today and Mandeville, Jamaica, that is for those who are international, right? And I, I was asked a question, you know, how did I find my purpose? And this is one of the questions that I get a lot. And if you haven't got a chance, you should go and get a copy of, yeah, most of my books I talk about purpose, but specifically my first book, Living a Royal Reality, Discovering Your Purpose, Identity and Worth in Christ, and also Empowered for Such a Time as This, you know, Answer the Call to Living a Life of Purpose and Obedience. Those two books, I talk a lot about purpose and how I discovered purpose. And, you know, I believe that, you know, it would help you to, to kind of develop your an idea or you know open your appetite about you know discovering purpose also my last book their insecurity i did talk a little bit about gifts in that book so you definitely want to go and check out my books if um purpose is one of the things that you know you're always wondering about now i wanted to come on today to share a little bit about how i discovered my purpose and let me let me say it again i hope i'm crystal day <laughs> Um, of course, if you're on my channel, you should know, but yes, I'm Crystal Day. I'm from the island of Jamaica and I'm an ambitious Jesus girl and I'm here to just help you to deepen your intimacy with God, to discover and walk out your identity in Christ and of course to use your gifts to impact others um, and impact lives for the kingdom of God. So that's my purpose, that's my mission and I just love it, right? So go back to listening to some of my previous videos and um, definitely go and listen to the introduction of every video. So let's get into it. So I discovered my purpose. I mean, I could actually take an hour, two hours to talk about the, the, the long journey of how I got into the knowledge and the revelation of what my purpose is. And let me just tell you what I believe and what the Holy Spirit would have revealed to me what my purpose is. Really, I exist to minister to women to live wholesome godly lives so that's the essence of what my purpose is now i it looks different in different seasons of my life right so right now i'm on the path where you know entrepreneurship is very big into a lot of things that i do and this is one of the ways that i do helping women and helping persons to burn the book that God has placed on their hearts. I also, in terms of, you know, carrying out my purpose, I do that through speaking. I'm doing that through YouTube. I do that through my podcast, right? I do that through writing books, writing blogs, um, you know, just ministering. So that's how I do it. But the truth is the society, especially right now in church and a lot of the ministry that you would see that people talk about purpose, a lot of times persons focus on the the external you know so if you're for you you are supposed to write a book if you're supposed to um you know have a mic in your hand and you know a lot of times people feel like oh this is the only thing if i'm walking in purpose it must look like this but i can tell you and one of the books i definitely interject to say you know that really would open your mind it doesn't help you to discover your purpose but it will help you to open your mind two books actually that will help you to open your mind about purpose one is a purpose driven life um by requiring it's it's a good book to kind of help you the foundation of understanding what um purpose could look like and also driven by eternity by john bevere those two books really kind of open your heart but let me also say that only god know your true purpose like only god can help to reveal your true purpose that's it. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you will never be able to walk with your purpose. I know, I know, um, and persons may disagree, but yeah, like, I mean, come and show me. Not because you're doing good things, not because you're making some level of impact, not because you're making money, not because you feel like what you're doing is a part of your mission in life. If you are not bringing glory to God in what you're doing, it that means if you do have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all that you're doing, no matter how passionate you are about it, 
it's not purpose right purpose can only be found in christ full stop so i say all of that to say how personally i came up with you know how, how i i came to know what my purpose is i I mentioned, you know, and I'm going to probably have to do a video about my conversion story. So I'll definitely probably do that. I probably need to write that down. Probably do that one tomorrow, my conversion story. Very long, but I'll try to keep. I'm trying to keep the videos within 20 minutes, right? I try not to go over 20 minutes. And so I, like many, I got baptized in about 2009, I believe. And again, when I share my conversion story, you'll get But I got baptized. Um, but I, like within six months i started fornicating again i started partying again so for many years i was one foot in one foot out in 2011 um i got pregnant and had a child so i was in church got pregnant um in 2013 you know i was engaged and uh, to to get married to you know my high school sweetheart and that was you know i mean for me i was like okay after living such a promiscuous life, you know, I'm a Christian, I want to get married and I know that this person love me and I love this person. So why not? Somewhere in, in, in the midst of 2013, I started to feel a level of unfulfillment that was just unbearable. And it, 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 it felt like I was just being ungrateful because the truth is at that time I had so much going on for me. So I had a really good job. Um, you know, I'd bought a really nice car at the time. I'd bought my own apartment to God be the glory. I'll give you another testimony of that. Um, I had a beautiful daughter. I was engaged to get married. Like in the grand scheme of things, I didn't understand why I was so unfulfilled. And I just remember just, just kind of just seeking the Lord. Like I was a Christian, but at that moment, you know, trying to stop fornicating and, you know, just trying to please God. That's the best way I could put it. Like trying to really understand why I felt so unfulfilled. And I remember, you know, in that level of unfulfillment, I started to kind of research. Like I remember, oh, I saw a quote or a meme somewhere, you know, on Instagram or Facebook, I don't remember, that says that you were born, you were not just born to pay bills and die. And I remember just reading that quote. I'm like, yeah, it, it could have just be that. No, I don't remember ever in church people talking about purpose at that time. In growing up, you know, I mean, I didn't grow up in church, but in church, you didn't hear a lot of people talking about purpose, right? You're just trying to not have sex, <laughs> not party, you know, go to Bible studies, you know, hear about the fruits of the spirit, stuff like that, but not purpose. Like, why am I truly here? So that kind of like i just remember saying to myself at this time i probably was about 24 i believe and i'm thinking that i'm 24 i've accomplished so much especially from how far i'm coming from was i living a perfect life no but i've accomplished so much why am i so unfulfilled why am i why is this not enough that's how i felt like why is this not enough and i started to just you know research on you know google you know different different youtube videos and articles and blogs and just to talk about purpose and one of the things that kept coming up about purpose is one asking you what is your passion um it probably asks about your experiences and uh, yeah so just things like that it would tell you that is a part of your purpose right so i remember like no you know i was supposed to you know pick the ring and all of these lovely things to get married i remember saying to god that hey i want to know why i'm here like it can't just be to do all of it like what else and i also started to pray about my engagement and again yes let me tell you i have no story because i'll tell you about my the lessons that i learned about my field engagement right but again listen he's a great person he's a great guy we have a good relationship no right i mean he hated me for a very long time but no you know me walking into christ he's so proud of me we have a good relationship right but i'm still want to marry me still <laughs> yeah but um yeah so where was i okay yeah so i remember saying to god that hey if this is not what you want me to do i want you to break off the engagement i know at the time i couldn't do it because 
yeah i just know i couldn't do it so if it wasn't god's will if it was god's will for me to not married and to discover my purpose he would have to just break it up and that's what god did you know a few days before my birthday i think about a week or less before my birthday um the engagement ended and initially i wasn't that distraught because i was like oh you know um god it was god's will and it didn't work out but i remember it was almost approaching my birthday and i just again just the void i mean of course now i was started to mourn losing you know this person but then also this void this void this unexplainable void and i remember just going to a party that that day on my birthday and i look really nice like yo my little shot my little look really nice right and um i just at the party i know i'm a party girl so i'm at the party and i just felt so unfulfilled like i just i just and then i'd gone back after you know in order to numb my pain i went back to my child's father and you know we had planned he had planned a real nice birthday getaway for me and i just tell him that i, I didn't want to go because i just felt the tugging of god you know i just felt god tugging me and so on my birthday you know i made my my daughter stay with her aunt and i was just home by myself watching twilight um movies and before before watching twilight i was just crying out to god like help i don't know what's happening why am i feeling like this why am i so unfulfilled why am i not happy and stuff like that and you know i just felt god was saying that you know really surrender my heart to him but it was a struggle and what that that like i ended up you know going back to having sex and fornicating because the emptiness like i was just trying to fill my emptiness with sex and partying and you know the friendships and no matter how i like that happened for a few months and i just didn't know how to surrender to the lord long story short um about the i'm gonna say my true 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 surrender happened december 31st 2013 up into january 1st i was at a party i was like god this is not like i, I can't feel the void anymore so that's when i i really believe that my true journey of purpose started because again i was baptized i was saved but i wasn't living according to god and he he couldn't like god can't reveal his purpose he won't let me not say he can't he probably won't reveal your purpose until you are in a place to accept what he's calling you to do and i just wasn't in a place right because i i just wasn't surrendered to him because every time i felt like i surrendered i was just going back to my child's father and going back to the sex and going back to the party and all of that and it was the that day like at a party like i'm not i'm not gonna that's it like i want to see god and it was very hard you know i lost a lot of friends <sighs> but fast forward um you know 2014 just kind of going through you know me and god me and god and trying to develop my relationship with him and you know trying to read my bible a little bit more and i remember the i think it was the yeah man it was 2014 this september i felt like the lord was leading me to to give up social media for three months and you know about some books purpose driven life um i had a lindsay book different different books and in that just kind of started again just seeking to learn about purpose and stuff and eventually in 2015 i remember oh so one of the things that god kept saying is that you know yes what you're passionate about it's a part of your purpose and i started i remember even that the 2015 going into 2015 i attended like every event i started to attend they're talking about purpose i remember going to a women's retreat at my church and yeah they were talking about purpose and in that moment you know god was saying i i just felt like hey what is it that you're passionate about mind you i started to join dance team i started to do like different things serving um so that i can kind of find what because i didn't feel like i have any talent i can't sing i mean i can dance but my kind of dancing is not for church <laughs> right god is still we um, saving my ways but um yeah like it just i don't know but that was the beginning of the journey of purpose for me and it just led to a lot of surrendering 
I, I launched a ministry, She's Royal Ministry, you know, at my church. I started doing events for teen girls and, you know, I just kind of started to find the things that I'm not just passionate about, but I just knew that this was a part, ministering to the young girls and serving, let me not, serving the young ladies, you know, knowing what their issues are and just serving them and just, you know, trying to provide solutions for them and, you know, things like that. And I eventually, I was doing my master's, I think in 2015 also, and the Lord called me to leave, I think between 2015 and 2016, and he called me to stop doing my master's and telling me that education is an idol for me and I should go to Bible studies, um, to Bible school, and because he needs to kind of refine me and, you know, I try to hold on to Bible school and my master's at the same time, again, you know, in disobedience and eventually I just, you know, continued Bible school. And for me, Bible school wasn't about becoming a pastor. It was me learning some foundation. And I tell people if I didn't go to Bible school, I would have turned back. Because me attending Bible school, the Bible school that I attended, it wasn't about theological college. It's different. It was about learning about true, the true vine, you know, learning about who Christ was, learning about the characteristics of the Holy Spirit and, you know, prior and some foundation things that I didn't learn because I didn't have proper discipleship. Fast forward in Bible school, we did a course called the Theology of Purpose. And, you know, they would have given us a formula and, you know, for, for months I kept saying, God, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? And he kept saying, in due time, I will tell you. And I just remember one night, I just heard it very clearly you exist um you exist you exist to minister to women so i exist to minister to women to live wholesome godly life and he said i'm going to teach you what wholesome live wholesome life look like you know it means practical christianity it means i care about you spiritually i care about you personally i care about you professionally and a lot of times in the christendom um a lot of persons don't get that but he revealed it to me, you know, and I remember getting up and writing it down. And next day, calling my Bible school teacher, I said, God said it, God said it, God said it, right? So that's how I kind of got the revelation of what my purpose is. Again, it looks different in different seasons of my life, right? It looks different in not just ministering like, oh, you know, pre praying for people or whatever. But it also show up in how I re reacted when I was in a nine to five job or when I have a business, right? How I treat my daughter, how, you know, I have my family. So it's, your purpose is not just about ministering to others. It's about who you are becoming, right? Because I'm learning to become a wholesome woman in Christ. Now, what advice would I give persons that are saying that they're seeking purpose? Now, my friends, I have quite a few friends that are always feeling so dissatisfied and almost annoyed that god has not t given told them their purpose and one of the examples that i would tell people um to one when you think about um the story of mary right mary at 14 she was given the amazing task of carrying you know um being the mother of jesus christ but then elizabeth at old age we're gonna give guess her, we're gonna say probably she's about 60 i don't remember if the scripture tells us but says she's about 60 and she has been asking the lord for a child and it was at 60 years old god answered her prior um to have a child while mary wasn't even praying and i give that analogy because here's what i'm saying is that what i'm trying to say is that god is god like he will reveal it, some people purpose quicker or versus other people it might take a little longer because all of us processes are different but you have to trust that god is not trying to hide your purpose from you you have to trust that when he reveals it you will just know it but what can you do while you're waiting for god to to reveal it like elizabeth you pray and worship god right you you serve right? You serve, you try to walk in obedience, you try to be who God has called you to be. Like, that's what you do while you're trying to wait. Because the truth is, for many of you that are listening, if God reveals the purpose that he has for you, one, it is going to feel very scary, right? Or um, it's going to be so scary that you just walk in disobedience and you don't want to do it. 
or um, you might try to do it on your own, right? You might try to be, do it on your own. So God in his omniscient, omniscient, omnipotent, he knows all things. He is, he's the all powerful one. He said, if I reveal it too soon, it might destroy you, right? Because a lot of persons would have gotten different prophetic word or gotten a promise about to God about something. And what we do is try to do it in our own strength. No. Does that mean that one person is better than the other? No, it just means that God knows his children, right? He knows that, hey, if I tell Crystal um, at that, in this moment, this is how she's going to store it. While some of us are just not ready, like we're just not ready for God to tell us yet. Because you're still, you still, you think that if God, like you still feel like God is obligated to you. You feel like um, that God hold you something right that kind of mindset that you feel like oh okay god tell me my purpose if i don't like it then i won't do it right and god is like hey be obedient in the small things so i tell people all the time right now that they're seeing me like recently i hosted this major conference in jamaica right in april um the kingdom auto success conference right and it was a massive success and persons will see me and persons bad mind me and that's the truth are jealous or envious because they're like who, who is she to do that but they don't know when i was hosting she's royal i had three girls carrying like every month i'm buying this big food expecting people to come out three four persons and the three four persons are my neighbor my sister and probably one of my sister friends that i took to the meeting right and then there are other times when a hundred persons show up or 50 persons show up but i I'm not, I've definitely not been perfect, but God has found me faithful in small things. And he has found me, I mean, there's so many things that God would have give, told me to do that was scary, but I was willing to be a fool for Christ. Some of you are, I'm not saying that God is, a, is, is not punishing you, he's actually saving you. Because if you, some of you, if God say, okay, I, I'm, I've called you to, um, to, to lead events and the first or second event that you host and if it, it, it doesn't work out then you start upset with God and you're vexed with God and you're not seeing it as a training ground again not saying that you know the R or thank you Holy Spirit or because you expect it a certain way you expect a hundred people to be there you start to compromise the gospel so that you can draw people there right and god is not a, god doesn't want his purpose to be contaminated another thing i want you to to keep in mind is that your purpose is not just one thing your calling is different i'm gonna do a video about the three um stages of calling but if you want to know more go and read my book empowered for such a time as this that revelation that god has given me about the three stages of calling is so impactful like i i leave that out now your purpose is why you existed and the truth is the main purpose and it's it's in corinthians i believe you exist your your true existence is so that you can bring god glory that's it like you exist to bring god glory that's it so wherever you are at are you giving God glory right now? Many of you are watching and you hate your job and you're complaining about the job and everything about the job and God has not found you faithful in that job but you want a, you want something better. Like understand that no matter, you are going to be serving people. That's it. Like it's about serving whether in your job, in, your, in, in church, in ministry. Like listen, like people, Christian people are not the nicest people to serve. They have this entitlement mentality. And if you are complaining about every single thing, how are you giving God glory in that? Right? So your, your life, your true purpose, like even though I said, oh, I exist to minister, whatever, whatever. Listen, if I'm not living a life that brings God glory, then all of it is in vain. All of it is in vain. And every time I'm tempted to do something that's out of you know, alignment, I have to come back like, is this giving God glory? Because that's your ultimate purpose. That's it, right? It, that's it. But of course, he has a specific calling and your calling now is a little bit different. Your calling is now your specific assignment. This is how some people are called to be pastors. Some people are called to be stay-at-home moms. Some people are called to, 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 
I don't to 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 be an architect. Some people are called to deal with climate change, right? Some people are called to be a geologist, right? Like he knows. And here's the thing about you thinking about purpose. Ask yourself, okay, am I doing what am I passionate about? Right? Am I doing what brings me joy? What would I do? Like, what would I do if I wasn't even getting paid? Like, so those are some of the things that can help you to, to kind of discover your calling. But again, your, pur your underlying purpose is, okay, how am I bringing glory to God? Am I building the kingdom in all that I do? So even the secular world, because a lot of times think, people think purpose is just about, oh, something aligned in church. Some of you are not called to serve in the church. It's true. Many of you are not, you're, like, you can have so much ushers, treasurers, prayer warriors, deacons. Like, the truth is, most of us, our main calling has to do with our secular job or our quote-unquote secular work or what we call marketplace ministry. How you are, how you are leading an organization or oh you are serving an organization whether as a janitor some of you it's so a way but god probably your 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 purpose is to be a janitor in this season right in this season because god is teaching you humility or you know like i don't know i can't tell you that there's a formula don't follow any if you go on youtube and nobody tell you this is a formula to find your purpose lies lies i can tell you the God, he has a, the word of God tells us that he has a specific blueprint for each of our lives. So I told you how I discovered mine, right? Yes, I tried different things, but what kept coming out was what are you passionate about, right? I love teenage girls. I love talking. I love writing. And these are some of the, the ways that God used me to bring glory to God, right? I love I recognize that I love when I started reading about branding. I like to talk about branding. I, I didn't know that I like to talk about marketing. And I'm able to know, talk about these things in not just a secular way, but in a kingdom way to be like kingdom. You understand? But it wasn't just a one night thing. And if you right now have been, you, you kind of, if you're watching this video and you kind of feel like you're upset with God because you don't know your purpose, you need to repent. You need to repent. Because the truth is God don't owe you anything. Continue to seek him. Continue to be diligent. Con Listen, one of the things that I learned, like I was evil. Try like after, yeah, I said, oh God, I want to know my purpose or whatever. I stopped asking about my purpose. What I started to do is God, oh, can I serve? How oh, can I show up? How oh, can I serve? Some of the things that I didn't want to do, you still have to do it, right? But it was just a learning process. So God don't hold you in his timing. You will know that you know, like, as you can, like, he's not trying to withhold. The word of God says not, no good thing will he withhold from you. Believe that. Why would he withhold your purpose from you? But some of you are just not ready yet. You have, you're going around circles about the same thing, around the same thing. God could not reveal my purpose to me in 2013 because I was still in the fornication bed. I was still trying to fill my void with men, with sex, with with drinking, with partying and all of that. And he had to he had to test me all the time to see, okay, would I go back to that when I was feeling the void, when my friends were rejecting me, when people were talking ill against me, when I didn't understand and I, I kept trying to try. You know what I'm saying? And I don't get it right. I would never come on this. I'm not going to be one of those people that act like, oh, you know, this is my purpose and uh, I live this. No. Like, every single day, I'm working on my salvation in fear and trembling. So, I probably would call this, you know, how I discovered my purpose, part one, I don't know. Because um, we reach almost 30 minutes and again, I don't want my videos to be too long. But, this is my story. What, what I would say is that you and this is your member every day i said i'm gonna give you a journal prom i want your journal prom for today to be if god if god reveal my purpose to me right now would i be able to handle it what would my posture are what would my posture be or am i postured for God to reveal his purpose for me. Am I in the right place? 
um, is my motive for knowing my purpose to write. Right? I want, you can phrase it however you can just journal it. But just ask yourself if you are ready to know what it is. And if you walk out that or if, is there something that could be hindering God revealing you? Is there a, a, a something that you're going around circles and about circles around? I leave this final example. I have a friend and she probably would listen to this and know who it is. And for years she kept asking about her purpose and you know her purpose and very dissatisfied. And she read a book um about you know financial management and debt management and she decided that you know she's going to go on this debt free journey and she shared it on social media and now she, for about two years she has been on this debt free journey. And I remember saying to her that if if God had told you five years ago that your purpose part up, let me not say because I I don't think that's our only purpose. Like I'll talk about it in calling, but I don't think that is but a part of her purpose. Educating persons about you know um, debt and how to get over debt. So I said to her five years ago, would you if God had revealed that to you, would you have done it? No, because at that five years ago she was not postured to 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 accept that and to deal with that. But no, you know, in that moment God led her to that book and now has been leading her to share her story and that's a way that he's been glorified. Because through that debt free journey, she has been blossoming more to know who God is for herself. Right? Not just who we think God is, not just who appearance of God is, not who we say pastor or, you know, your favorite minister leader say God is, but who the true living God is to me because he will reveal himself individually to you in a certain way. For somebody, God is a healer. But if you're not sick, God is your provider, right? Like he knows what you need in that moment. So again, my... Last, my tip, closing with my top three tips right now. One, if you have been badgering God and you feel like, oh, very anxious about what your purpose is, I want you to repent. I want you to have a posture where you can say, God, I want to know my purpose, but guess what? I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I want to know your voice. I want to be able to discern what you're saying to me more. Help me to be obedient. Help me to live a righteous life. Help me to, 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 to surrender. Secondly, I want you to stop comparing. Stop comparing yourself to people. Stop comparing yourself to what others are doing. And also keep, that in, keep in mind that somebody being on a mic or somebody, you know, writing a book or whatever, that's not, like, that's not the definition of what true purpose is. Right, God will place you where He wants to place you. You just have to be surrendered. And three, remember that God in His His sovereignty will reveal it. Just like how uh, Mary can have a child at fourteen, but Elizabeth can have a child at sixty. But when the right timing, like imagine if Elizabeth got pregnant thirty years before, who would have been Jesus' forerunner? Like God, God like God had the, His sovereignty all oh, mixed up in a one long time. So if he he's not like has not totally revealed everything to you yet, just trust his heart for you. So that's it. Again, I please comment. I let me know if this you know bless you in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, remember to do the journal prompt. Let me know if you have any question that you want me to ask that you want me to cover. And I just want to wish you an amazing, amazing, amazing um day or evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. See you soon. God bless you.